Hello. Hello, and welcome to Political Forum for Wednesday, November 6, 2013. Uh, we welcome today as our guest, Alderman John Arena from Chicago's 45th Ward. Uh, welcome back to Political Forum. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rod Joy. I'm a board member here at Can TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live, interactive call-in program uh, that allows you direct access to your elected officials. Uh, for the next 25 minutes or so, uh, we hope that you have an opportunity to learn more about Alderman Arena uh, and his views on some of the most pressing challenges and opportunities facing the city of Chicago. Uh, above all, uh, this program is about fostering a strong sense of civic engagement in Chicago. Uh, your calls are a major focus of the program, and we invite your questions and comments for Alderman Arena. Uh, please uh, join us at 312-738-1060. Uh, that's 312-738-1060, and we'll try to get to as many uh, questions and comments as we can. Uh, Alderman, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Uh, for our viewers who may be meeting you for the first time tonight, uh, maybe you could say a few words about uh, the 45th War. Absolutely. The 45th Ward is on the northwest side of Chicago, right where the Kennedy and the Eden split. It's about halfway between downtown and O'Hare. Um, uh, mainly single-family homes uh, and uh, middle, middle class folks. Um, we have some uh, great neighborhood uh, destinations like the Copernicus Center, the National Veterans Art Museum, which will be celebrating its first anniversary in our neighborhood on Monday, and uh, great places to eat like Gale Street Inn and uh, Central Kitchen and Tap. Great. And you've lived in uh, Portage Park uh, since 1994, and you've That's represented correct. the people of the 45th Ward since 2011. Uh, what motivated you to, to run for office and to get involved in public service? Um, I centered a lot around the economic development issues. Um, we've got a great quality of life quotient there, but um, in terms of uh, restaurants, uh, entertainment, um, basically the, the shopping district, historic shopping districts like Jeff Park, Jefferson Park and uh, Six Corners had lagged behind um, through the 2000s. And I had been active in the community as a small business owner and just really saw an opportunity to do more, to tell people more about the Northwest Side as a destination and the great things that are already there. And it's really worked to attract new businesses and new, um, uh, new destination like the Veterans Art Museum and Filament Theater. Terrific. Um, let's talk about the budget. Sure. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Mayor Emanuel presented his proposed 2014 uh, budget to the City Council, a uh, $7 billion budget. Uh, a lot of people who are cigarette smokers or like to speed aren't big fans of the budget, mm -hmm. um, but the, the mayor, I think, was trying to address a projected $339 million uh, budget shortfall. Um, what is your initial reaction to uh, the mayor's proposed budget? Well, I mean, overall, it's a regressive budget with the tax increases that are discussed in there, um, fines and fees. It really kind of continues the, the same uh, position that he took with the 2013 budge, budget. Um, we do have some pressing issues that we have to deal with, obviously the pension issue that's looming. Um, you know, our biggest concern in this budget, and I, I work with uh, a group called the Progressive Reform Caucus, is um, we have to look at public safety. We have to use the budget to set our priorities. And there is money in city government. I mean, we, we collect taxes. People know that because they're paying them. And uh, it's really how we use them. And right now, one of our biggest concerns is public safety. Uh, $93 million uh, last year was allocated to uh, overtime for the police force. And we had budgeted $32 million. So clearly, we have money to cover these issues. But how we're spending that money, we think, is out of line with what we need to do in terms of the size of our police force. So we're asking for uh, 500 new officers um, to, to be added to this budget, and that can be an offset. Right now, this budget calls for $71 million in police overtime. So uh, we take $50, $60 million of that and put it towards full-time officers. We can get uniformed officers on the street that get to know the neighborhoods and really start making a real impact on uh, the problems that we have in troubled neighborhoods. Uh, you're watching Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we invite you to flex your activism muscles by calling in Absolutely. with your questions and comments uh, for Alderman Arena. Uh, you can reach us at 312-738-1060, uh, 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman, you mentioned the Progressive uh, Reform Caucus. Um, 
educate our viewers on what exactly the, the caucus is all about and, and why uh, you decided to, to join as a member? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a relatively new caucus. It's been formed since I came into office. Uh, there's eight members right now out of the 50 uh, on the city council. And really it's just uh, aldermen that align on a, a core set of principles um, that, that we agree uh, need to kind of govern the direction we take the city in the, in the coming years. And uh, those focus around social justice, um, uh, equitable and fair housing, um, uh, wage issues, um, really uh, trying to move the city away from a, a really kind of corporate approach to governing to a more a progressive grassroots approach to government. Great. And you uh, and the Progressive Reform Caucus held a series of town hall meetings after the mayor's budget wa was introduced. Uh, what did you hear from uh, Chicagoans at those hearings? Uh, over and over again, we heard about the mental health uh, crisis in this city right now. Um, which really t dovetails with uh, the public safety issues that we have. Uh, we closed uh, six of the 12 city-run mental health clinics back in 2012. And uh, when we were discussing that, um, we were going to move those folks over to, a, a, to a privately run uh, health clinics. And we lost some folks in that transition. And the problem is where they turn up generally is in the county jails. Um, so a police officer dealing with somebody who's dealing with mental health issues can't determine whether that is mental health or otherwise. Uh, they just have to deal with the, the situation at hand and they're not, they're not mental health experts. Um, but we know that these folks, when, they, when they're out on the street, when they're not, uh, they don't have the consistency, um, we lose them. And that's where one of the things that, that we heard over and over again, uh, that we need to look at a way to bring those, some of those resources back to our communities. You're watching Political Forum, a live interactive program. Uh, we invite your questions and comments uh, at 312-738-1060. I think we have a, a caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening. Good evening. I have a question concerning uh, the Ventra card system. I know that some people have uh, talked about uh, all the concerns they have when they have the card. It's not working. They're getting double charged. For me personally, I haven't even received my card. Yeah. yet and i'm afraid i'm going to be left behind and that and i'm trying to get in touch with customer service can't get a hold of them emailing them, calling them, nothing's working so i'm just wondering like i'm, I'm just frustrated well, what can we do um uh, unfortunately i i can't answer specifically what you should do in your situation obviously keep calling um we as a city council we're concerned about this alderman bob fioretti from the second ward has called for hearings on this to find out exactly what's you know what the problems are and uh, uh, Forrest Claypool has, has said, look, we're going we're gonna to delay the rollout, the full rollout of this system until we get the bugs worked out. And really, we just tried to do too much too fast. We asked everybody to be an early adopter, uh, you know, from day one. And we already had a card system. So there's a lot of transition that has to happen here. And we really just tried to do too much in too short a period of time. So the, the word from uh, CTA was that they're going to delay this until they get 99% of the bugs worked out with the equipment. Uh, and make sure that everybody has their card that's applied for one before they fully transition over and uh, and 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 get rid of the old uh, fair card system. Are you hearing from your constituents? Uh, you know, our, our caller uh, referenced this as a challenge for him personally. Yeah. Do you hear from folks in the 45th ward about this? We issue? do. I mean, what's happening is they're they're not getting the response like he described. They're, the card isn't coming in the mail, and they're worried about this looming deadline. So the assurance that you have right now from CTA is that they're going to hold off on the final transition until they get the bugs worked out. So I think uh, the, the caller should rest assured that we're not going to leave him high and dry without a way to get onto the CTA. And that's one of the things that we're going to continue to do as, as the city council to make sure that we don't uh, push this too fast uh, and then leave people out in the cold. One of the things you mentioned earlier is the, the, the budget and uh, public safety yeah. and the, the views of the Progressive uh, Reform Caucus around public safety. And I think at the heart of that issue uh, is how we uh, police Chicago mm -hmm. and this notion of uh, boosting funds for overtime pay versus adding uh, new uh, cops to uh, uh, the city. Yeah. Um, say a little bit more about why you're supporting this notion of more officers versus overtime pay. Well, in the last, in, in the 2013 budget and the 2014 budget, uh, the mayor allocated enough for 500 additional officers. But that really just kind of keeps us at 
uh, attrition, which is uh, officers retiring in any, any given year is somewhere around 500 to 600 officers. So we're really just holding a water line there. Um, what we, with the Superintendent McCarthy, I agree with his position on uh, policing where community policing has to be baked in to everything that an officer does. But the only way it works well is if the officers that are assigned to a beat really know that beat. They know the folks on the corner, the good guys and the bad guys. And unless the trust is reestablished that was lost in past years between the, the Chicago Police Department and some of these neighborhoods that are troubled, um, the only way you do that is by having a consistent presence of the same face, the same officers, shift after shift. If these officers are coming in on overtime, um, it really doesn't help to establish that. So I believe in the philosophy. I just don't believe we're executing the philosophy in exactly the right way. By adding enough money for 500 officers over and above what's already allocated in this budget, it will allow us to put cops in those beats that will get to know those neighborhoods and start making some inroads in, those, in that regard. You're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive program. We invite your questions and, and comments for Alderman John Arena from Chicago's 45th Ward. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. I want to touch more on it, on the fact of hiring more police officers. You should certainly hire more diverse police officers because the cars used to say to serve and protect. But me, I'm a black woman. I don't particularly trust the police that are out here, and frankly, I'm afraid of a lot of them because, again, to the point of this shooting first and asking questions uh, later. We need more police out there, but we need more police that, like you said, can connect with the communities. And for some of these white police officers coming in black communities, they're afraid to be in it to begin with. I, I just think we need more people of color on the police force and, you know, to help bridge that thing that's going on with all these shootings and what have you. But as far as just constantly hiring white police officers, I'm not for it because I'm afraid of them. Yeah, and this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. We can't have a population that's worried about, you know, both the bad guys and the guys in, the, in blue who are supposed to be there for them. We need to breach... Uh, we need to uh, bridge that trust gap that exists right now. And, uh, and we need a diverse uh, uh, force that, that looks like our communities and, uh, and can come in and connect, as, she, as the caller just said. I think what she says really illustrates what we're trying to do in, in the caucus. Great. I think we have a, another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Oh, yeah, I know when it comes to addressing crime and stuff in communities, there's a lot of sort of citizen groups that I, I've heard about forming in different neighborhoods. I was I'm wondering if you have... Any, like, neighborhood watch things or any sort of success stories from uh, your ward to share? Um, the, the 45th Ward, you know, and I, when we talk about public safety, uh, I, I'm in a strange position because I'm in the 16th district. Majority of the 45th Ward is in the 16th district. Uh, part of it's in the 17th. But these are relatively safe neighborhoods. Our, our crimes mostly center around property crimes, theft, things like that. Um, but... One of the things that keeps our neighborhood strong is, is a, a wide array of community groups, whether it's chambers of commerce or neighborhood associations, that really create that kind of community connection between folks. And, you know, one of the strongest uh, uh, aspects of policing is that uh, fact that somebody sees something happening, sees something that doesn't feel right in their gut, and they pick up the phone and call 911. And, uh, and whether they see an officer, you know, in five minutes or ten minutes or not at all, the fact that a call is made, uh, one, it, it helps us log where trouble is, and, and as they allocate police officers, the, the police force knows where to put them. Um, so our biggest you know, success story is the fact that we have a connected community. And in, 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 that's true in all neighborhoods. There's people in every neighborhood, black, white, Latino, it doesn't matter, that care about their community. They have to f have trust that when they call 911, that somebody's on the other end that's going to be there for them. And that's really what we need to build across the city to create a strong, safe neighborhoods. And uh, the alderman is very modest because in addition to that response, he also made the news uh, for helping to, to foil a rash of thefts of catalytic converters in your that's ward. True. So when you're not busy serving as an alderman uh, and, and helping solve constituent problems, you're also helping to fight crime. Do you want to say a word about that episode? You know, I, and it's, I don't know if it's modesty. It's really just what I just described. I saw something going on. Uh, they were stealing my neighbor's catalytic converter. I watched them wriggle out from under the car. And, uh, and I just, you know, as they drove away, I got their license plate. I called 911. How this, got, how this case got broken was good police work 
and another citizen seeing the same car and the same guys doing the same thing, calling 911. And then we just had really good police work, putting the pieces together and getting these guys in the station and getting them to confess to it. And I was told by the, uh, the, the officer, the detective that was working on this, after they caught these guys, this rash dropped by 90%. So it's not, you know, no one of us can do all these things. And we can't have a police officer on every corner. That's not the kind of society we want to live in. What we want is communities working with our police making sure that we're providing information so they need know where to go and then taking that information to its logical conclusion. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm curious. Um, uh, I'm an avid bike rider, and um, I've been hearing some noise about uh, maybe taxes for bike riders. Is that correct? Uh, alderman Pat Dowell, um, who's who's uh, a great alderman from the the, the uh, third ward, th the third ward. Thank you. Um, you know, she she floated this idea, and this is what happens at budget time, and and we want to see this. We want ideas put on the table. This particular idea, I don't I don't think it's going to be workable. The the fact is to try to license a bicycle, which is much less impact on the infrastructure and harder to track in the system. Um, I just don't see how it would work, that it would generate revenue, and that's really what it was proposed for. What we want to do is, uh, you know, we want to float ideas like this, and we'll vet them out through the process and see if it works or not. Um, what we need to do is encourage uh, the cycle community. Um, I, I agree with the mayor, his goal of getting 100 miles of bike lanes uh, established in the city within his first term. Um, is is very exciting idea. The the day that I caught these guys or saw these guys, you know, stealing the data converter, I was going out for a bike ride in the morning. So I, I'm a cyclist too. Um, we need to create a culture of not just cars and our city streets, but pedestrians, cyclists, and cars all living, you know, and sharing the the resources that we have. Um, we do need to make sure our cyclists are abiding by the laws at the same time, and that was part of the. Um, the motivation be behind her proposal, which was to get cyclists into some kind of training course. But I think a more, uh, a better way to handle this would be to make sure that our police are enforcing. If somebody's riding a bicycle on the sidewalk, don't just issue a warning, issue a ticket, and maybe get that person into a training course and get them to understand the dangers of a, a crash with a bicycle and a pedestrian. Um, so I think there's some, there's some good things that can be taken from this. But trying to impose a licensing system at this point I don't think is workable. We appreciate your calls and questions for Alderman John Arena from Chicago's 45th Ward. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hello. Uh, thanks very much Hi. for taking my call. Um, my name is Carol Harold, and I'm from a group called the uh, Committee for Media Access. And uh, we, you were talking about your Progressive Reform Caucus and grassroots efforts and community efforts and we are i think a community effort but for the whole city of chicago mm -hmm. as diverse as it is and what we're what we're concerned with is programs like your program on can tv and there are about 30 other um, call-in programs that they have and they have many other uh, programs that represent the different aspects of uh our, our wonderful city and what we really need, we you know, the RCN contract for their franchise was renewed a while back, and they it, it ended up being quite a good uh, a deal. And what we're worried about now is whether uh, we're going to get from Comcast um, a setup that's as good as or better than we were able to reach from RCN, and that rests in the hands of the city council mm -hmm. and. Uh, your Progressive Reform Caucus sounds like um, a, a great group to um, rally behind this cause. I, I'm sorry I'm talking so long, but could you give me your feelings and where you think the Progressive Reform Caucus would come out on this? Um, well, we haven't seen uh, those negotiations yet and what, what they've produced, uh, but the RCN deal was a, was a good deal. Um, I kept in contact with the folks here at Can TV and, and tracked that as it was going through. Um, yeah, we want to make sure that, that uh, resources for the community like this are available. I mean, it, this shouldn't all be about uh, private uh, entities uh, taking, you know, full advantage of the public airways. They need to give back to the community 
um, as much as possible. So we look forward to and you know call on uh, some good negotiations here. We have a kind of a roadmap with the RCN deal, so we're hopeful that uh, Comcast will will follow something along those lines. Let's talk for a second about participatory participatory budgeting. Yeah. And for the past few years, you've invited your constituents to have a voice in how you dole out over a million dollars in menu money in the 45th Ward. Uh, can you say a few words of, about participatory budgeting and why that's something uh, you're so supportive of? Sure. Uh, it was something that I was watching before I even came into office. Joe Moore uh, from the 49th Ward started this process. Uh, this would be his, uh, I believe it's his fourth year or fifth year that he's been doing it. And um, it, it's really an innovative uh, approach to, uh, to government spending. Um, each alderman gets about uh, $1.3 million that they can use towards infrastructure project. It's bonded money, so it's got to be something that has some permanence to it, more than 10 years, renewing streets, lighting, things like that. Um, and this process takes about a million dollars of that money and puts it into uh, the public's hands. We have, um, in the 45th Ward, we have a meeting coming up tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at Thoroughgood Marshall School, which is an assembly meeting where you get a kind of an overview of the process. Uh, we ask for people to volunteer on committees. Um, and what they, those committees do is they basically come up with projects that, um, that are important to the community. And they propose these projects. They get, we get, help them get bids and quote them out so we know how much a particular project's gonna, gonna cost. Uh, for example, this morning we broke ground at Bobian Elementary School on a, about a six and a half million, $650 million dollar um, play lot, uh, AstroTurf project, and, and new play structures. Now, I only have a million dollars, so about a, a, a $181 million or thousand, $181,000 of my menu money went to that project, but that money leveraged the additional money from CPS. And that's really how this pro process works well. Um, not only making sure that we have our streets resurfaced, but finding ways to bring additional resources to the community. And the important thing is the community is the one that decides the process, decides what projects are voted on, and I abide by the turnout of the vote. Great. Um, we're watching, you're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we invite uh, your questions and comments for Alderman John Arena. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, uh, good evening, Alderman. First, I good want evening. to thank you for uh, responding to the previous caller saying that the Progressive Caucus would support CAN TV. What I'd like to know, though, uh, you know, tomorrow is the budget hearing for the Business Affairs and Consumer Protection Department, and the funding for CAN TV falls under the auspices of that department, and they will be discussing various issues relating to the Comcast uh, agreement. Do you plan to attend uh, that uh, hearing tomorrow? I do plan to attend. I've been going to the meetings since they started uh, a week ago Monday. Um, these are incredible opportunities for me as an alderman to understand what the various committees are, or the, the various departments are dealing with and how they're approaching their budget challenges. So I will be at the, the hearing again tomorrow as well as on Friday. And I hope since you're having the opportunity to speak to your con constituents and other Chicagoans on this program, you did say that you support CAN TV, but as you know, uh, often the public is told by the mayor and our aldermen that they're going to do one thing, and we learn later that they're going to do something else. Um, it, if the question is, well, I mean, we have to be, you know, that's our job is to be vigilant of the promises that are made. And a budget is a, a direction document. Uh, it's a roadmap, and uh, we're working on some resources for the city council to really vet the budget in a much deeper way, as, as well as uh, keep up with uh, the, the spending of the city as we go forward. Great. Uh, thank you all for your excellent calls. Uh, we heard uh, questions and comments ranging from the Ventra card to diversity of our, our law enforcement offers, officers to uh, bicycles in Chicago. Um, in order for our uh, democracy to flourish, we need an informed and engaged citizenry. So we'd like to thank you uh, for tuning in, uh, for calling in, and we invite you to join us uh, next week uh, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the next edition of Political Forum. Thank you so much. Thank you.